Did two YouTubers just break the divide between social media influencers and Hollywood legends? I think so. I just got done seeing the newest film from A24, Talk To Me, which is filmed by the, f the brothers, Rocka Rocka guys. <laughs> I'm not gonna pretend like I know how to say their names. Dandy and Michael, the good boys, the lads. They just came out with an amazing movie, and if you know me, I mean, I eat up A24 horror films. I eat up horror films in general. Do I complain a lot? Am I a bitch? Yes, absolutely. Whenever I watch something, I give it a fair reading. Sometimes stuff sucks. It's just the case. But Talk To Me has done something so incredible. This is their freshman film. This is their first professional film. If you know Rocka Rocka guys, you know that they've been doing stuff on YouTube forever. I mean, they're legends within their own right. They're amazing. But to make the transition from YouTube to Hollywood is no small feat, especially for people to treat you seriously, to make sure that what you're making isn't internet grade, it's Hollywood grade, that people aren't questioning anything. Remember Shane Dawson's horror film? <laughs> Remember the Smosh movie? Ah! Ah! What the hell is this, dude? Right? Remember the Fred movie? Remember all, like, four Fred movies? Ow! Bet you thought there was only one. You probably didn't even know there was a Fred movie, right? <laughs> this movie, I mean, it's a contender for best film of the year, in my opinion, for my sakes. And it's probably one of the best horror films I've seen in the last decade. Whenever I saw Talk To Me, it was the same kind of visceral feeling I had when I first saw Hereditary, where you were like, Oh shit, this is special, this is something different. It's so tightly done, the story is so cohesive and good, and it's so honest in its approach that it makes it impossible not to like. And God damn it, I had to make this video because I just, you have to go see it. You need to go see it, you need to go support this film. You need to make sure that these guys get the recognition they deserve because it's amazing. And these are some of the reasons why. I'm trying to walk this fine line of not spoiling the movie because the movie itself is about a group of teenagers. One of the girls is struggling because her mother's gone, she's passed away. But in this universe, teenagers use this occult-like symbol of this hand to talk with ghosts, with demons, paranormal type stuff. And it's used as like a party trick. So instead of like people doing Snapchats being like, oh my God, I'm drinking so much. I just got fucked in the bathroom. It's more like people like, it's that kind of thing. And it, it, what's crazy about that is that this movie is written by people who are from social media. So they utilize social media in such a good way. It's not like some 58 year old who's just like, all right, horror film with like TikTok, like a TikTok horror film, like girls, like, like a guy. We could put a ghost in the phone. Maybe, okay, I'm gonna write that down. That's a good idea. Ghost in phone. It feels like one of the first horror films I've seen where the use of social media is integral to the story in a compelling and realistic way. By that, I mean, it's not gimmicky. It's not like it's a, it's not a TikTok horror film. It utilizes it in a correct way where it's believable, it's realistic. It doesn't feel like that one scene in the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre where Leatherface kills a guy and they all put out their phone and they say, you're so canceled. And then you take, you take a giant, katana and you drive it into your stomach <laughs> to, to escape this world. No, it feels believable. It feels like I'm at a party, which is fun. I like being immersed into the story. And that's what this film does so well. And I got to sit down with Danny and Michael and kind of talk about some of the interesting things I thought from the film. First off, the entire driving force of the film is just this symbolic hand. And it's so fucking smart that this hand is representative of like a party drug, whiskey or fucking weed, anything. It's a vice. It's something that's supposed to take you somewhere else in the way that you would, you know, get drunk at a party to escape your problems, to have all these different vices that you use to escape reality. And this time the party trick is this hand. Our generation today is so obsessed with all things morbid and the paranormal and everyone's excited by the idea of talking to a ghost whereas people used to be terrified of it. Mm -hmm. Everyone doing these like challenges or like doing the Ouija board and filming it or like trying to communicate with dead people and doing all this sort of stuff. Uh, or even just the idea of uh, following trends. It, like yeah, it's like this thirst for attention like through social media and stuff. Everyone wants to be famous and seen. So it's like, and it's like whatever that takes, good or bad, you, you're gonna do it to try and get attention. And like, so that the hand is like a, a modern day Ouija board in a way where it's like, they don't understand, to them, it's a, it's perception. Like to them, it's a good thing. And like, 
look, you, uh, there's some, uh, someone else acting through you, but they don't understand what it is they're messing with. Well, two of the different dialogues are like are tapping into the different metaphors that the hand is. Like, I let you in. It's like I'm letting these things into my body, these like, whether it's drugs or alcohol or sex, it's like trying to feel something because they're not really feeling anything at the time and then leaning on those things as a crutch is like that. I let you in part of that, the seance. Mm -hmm. It's like, like tapping into that. And then, yeah, talk to me is like another part. But like, yeah, we'd like, it's just representing different things, but like a part of it is representing vices in general. Yeah, it's like if you're using like drinking or whatever to escape something, as opposed to just having a good time, it's like you're not necessarily going to have the best time. And that's like the, you know, the whoever holds the hand says, talk to me, the spirits they attract is like tied to their emotions, what they're feeling, you know, deep down. It's kind of like doing a, you know, like one of those ayahuasca trips or something, you know, those, <laughs> you know, it's like you're facing your demons in a way. Yeah. That's what you're going to attract. And then... Each spirit is like, is drawn to the kids' energies and what they're going through in their personalities. Yes. We follow a cast of teenage people, predominantly our character Mia, who's played by Sophie Wilde. First off, let me just say, star. Star in the making. Phenomenal acting across everybody on the board, but Sophie really just like, she is the conductor of this train. Everybody's performances are highlighted and pushed forward because of her general performance. That's the case with any good cast, is that you have your pivotal character that is driving things forward. The mom in Hereditary, being that, drives the whole movie forward. I mean, every show that you've seen, James Gandolfini, Brian Cranston, you're goddamn right. It's like all of these things where you need that central character who just like, you're like, they got it. They know exactly what they're doing. Mia is dealing with the loss of her mom, and it's kind of her trying to fit in, but it all goes a little too far once this uh, hand gets involved. I'm trying not to spoil anything because I really want you to experience yourself, but just know that the way that this is this goes about is so tastefully done and so interesting that it's just uh, it's really good. I'm gonna do it, go into a little bit of a spoilers here. I'm trying not to spoil anything. There's one extremely visceral scene with Riley, who is Mia's friend's brother, and they're very close, and he's kind of in this point at this party where he feels left out like her, and he wants to feel grown up. He wants to be a part of this situation. Obviously, a very dangerous thing. I mean, they're dealing with paranormal fucking craziness. And it's one of those things where the film is definitely leading you to be like, this isn't gonna be good. Like, this, this is not a good outcome. The whole movie has been, I wouldn't say necessarily too tame because the movie opens with like a pretty gruesome suicide, but this scene with Riley and the way that the actor Joe Bird handled this scene was so horrifyingly graphic. But the beautiful thing about this movie is that it's like, it's it's a different thing to set up something like a characters that you're like, oh, I know, I, I've met these people. I know I've been with these people. And then whenever some crazy shit does happen, it feels like an atomic bomb going off in your face. That's an Oppenheimer reference. I, I'm, I'm hip, I'm cool. Yeah, it's kind of like, we, we wanted to make some like characters that you can relate to and then when stuff happens, you feel it. You know, it's not just happening and then you're like, oh, okay, that's, you know, scary or gross, but it's not really, uh, it doesn't have an effect on you personally. We, want, we wanted to have the characters, so when those moments hit, you're like, oh shit. <laughs> you know, because you know the family, you know the dynamic, and you know like, oh man, what's this gonna lead to like after this? It's like, you know, how much weight those moments carry. And then like the, the change moving forward. I find like Sophie's just so good at, at playing that, you know, all the actors that we got were amazing, but. Yeah, casting was so important. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. But like there's like how the relationships change in that because of that moment, you know, from yeah. the point. And if you've seen anything with Rocker Rocker before, I mean, they, they're violent guys. They like filming like fights, violence. That's their foray, they love it. I mean, we've all seen the McDonald's video. Ronald beats the shit out of the kid. It's awesome. <laughs> But because the whole movie isn't just in your face, visceral violence, the moments that it does happen, it's it hits so much harder and there's so much weight behind them. And also we linger with this character, Riley, we see him and he's tortured. I mean, he's like, he looks so beat up. You feel so sorry for the mom. So no, no, I'm not gonna keep spoiling things, but it's, it's, it gets a little wild, a little bit crazy. The, the original passes of the script were way more extreme and it was about peeling it back and not becoming a uh, shock horror or letting it be too gratuitous. Like, yeah, I, I'm not, not too big on torture porn and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, like, it's so fun to do in those rack of vids, but then for this, like, we really wanted it to be based in, like, a reality and, like, have characters that we really care about and not be, like, just shock value for the sake of shock value. Like, we yeah. wanted those moments to carry weight. Yeah, you want those moments to be earned. And when they are, don't shy away from them, but don't linger on them either. Or, yeah, just be gratuitous for gratuitous sake. It's like, the it's all, yeah, it's all tying back to the story, you know? And we could have made that 
that scene go for And there was one other scene that we, we get, there's like a scene where Mia goes to hell and that scene went for two minutes and a half initially and we cut it down to 20 seconds and showed only glimpses of what we shot. We shot some Because it was way too fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> we shot some horrific shit, you know. Another notable thing about this movie too is that it's all Australian actors. Hearing the story of how Danny and Michael, you know, they got offered this a large studio, I don't know if they want me to name who, uh, was going to buy this film and make it, but they were gonna have to take creative liberty like take almost all the creative liberties out of it and change the vision of the film. So Danny and Michael made the film themselves, casted it all in Australia, which is where they're from. And it's a predominantly Australian film, which doesn't sound like a lot, but for overseas films to do well in the States, especially because people in the States are so fucking dense. They hear an accent, they're like, what is it like, what the, okay, why do they sound like that? What is that? Why are they it's so annoying? Like their voices are grating in my head. So for them to take that risk and to have it pay off is just so fucking satisfying. It was risky. <laughs> I know, was we're saying that like our lawyer said, cause yeah, we have to put our fees back into the film to like make it happen and meet the budget. Budget. Mm -hmm. uh, and then our lawyer was just like, 8% of Australian filmers make their budget back. So I was like, like uh, for some reason, a lot of Australian cinema doesn't seem to translate well. It doesn't internationally, like, but that, that's the thing is, as well. It's like, but for us, we weren't making it to be like, oh, we're gonna do this to make heaps of money off this. It's like, if we can make the movie 1% better by putting all our fees in or whatever, it's like, that's what we're gonna do. And it felt right to have it in Australia and with Australian accents. Yeah, yeah. And it was just, like, yeah, I just completely wrote off, yeah, even the dialogue is, there's a lot of like Australian-ish sort of like, not. But, like, but then also like, like our videos, we're Australian, we film in Australian stuff, we do a lot of our pop culture stuff, but it's like an Australian channel, but our main audience isn't Australian. Our main audience is international. And like, that's what we wanted the movie to be as well. Like, we think it works internationally, not just, niche Australian thing, oh, nice. you know? Yeah. With the lore of this hand, it really does feel like it could happen anywhere in the world. By having it be an Australian film, which, you know, it's, they're still speaking English, but still it's just, it's like a cultural divide that still feels like, oh shit, this could happen to me tomorrow. If like that thing showed up in my life, this could happen. Which I think a lot of foreign films, you can have, you can kind of distance yourself to where you're like, you don't have that intimacy. But with like social media and how, God, how the, the, the teenage actors and how teenagers act like teenagers. They don't hire a 35 year old to play an 18 year old girl. They actually cast this movie in such a great way. It's, it's fucking amazing. The direction, the writing, it's just such a home run. I mean, I left the theater trying to even think about what are things I don't like about it. Sometimes you watch something and you have rose color, you have rose goggles on because you're just so blinded with like maybe a subject matter you like or like a genre of film you like. So you really let a lot of things slide. So I, I like to be very like, you know, you see a movie and you're like, oh, maybe that wasn't very good or this. To me, this is such a strong and original idea. And I'm just so, I'm just so happy for those guys, man. They killed it. If you guys are watching this, you killed it. Fucking great job for real. This is just going to be one of those movies where it's just like, it's, it feels like an Ari Aster thing all over again. It feels like the shit's going to blow people's minds and it's going to be an amazing start to such an unbelievable career. I feel people are going to watch this video in the future, even like a year or two from now and be like, well, duh, dude, it's talk to me. Like, of course, like the same way that people talk about like get out or hereditary or something like that. Let me tell you, I am building, I am hyping this thing up. I don't, I mean, you know, I put my fucking life on this film. It's so good. Like I haven't been so sure about a film in such a long time, especially one that I've recommended on this channel to just be like, I don't, I can't think of a person who wouldn't like this film is another thing. I recommended the sadness, but I know like my mom would probably be like, well, the, the gratuitous rape is a bit much for me, <laughs> but like talk to me. I feel like if you're an avid horror fan, and you want to be scared. You're going to like this. It's just such a beautiful harmony. It's like almost like seven angels just singing and, and, and uh, synchronicity, creating the perfect note. It's just amazing. I know that this is me being biased, but it's very cool seeing this come from a YouTuber. From somebody to be like, fuck you, we're gonna make it ourselves and take that and then just be like, suck my dick, Hollywood. I'm gonna force feed this down your throat. It's basically them just saying we're, they didn't sacrifice their creative vision. They didn't bow down to anybody to make, you know, to get more money out of something. They made the movie they wanted to make. And you can just tell, if you see any interviews with Danny and Michael, you can tell how earnest and how excited and how passionate they were for this film. It's just awesome to see, man. Like, I feel like they're dad. Like, I'm not their dad, but I feel like it's one of those things where it's just like this visceral pride. You feel so proud for somebody and you're so happy for someone, and that's how I feel here. Because it really is just such a home run. And I wanted to take time today and use this platform to tell you, go see this fucking movie. It's amazing. You will not be disappointed. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. And for people who are like, oh God, what a fluff piece. Fuck yourself. Try to go, go see the movie, say that you didn't get scared or you didn't have a good time. The ball's in your court. 
Uh, also, I think that we'll probably link... <laughs> Sorry, guys, but a little plug for myself. I think we're going to upload the entire interview sit-down session we did with Danny and Michael about their film, and I have some more interviewees questions there I will put up on the Patreon. So if you want to support this channel or support my other channel, feel free to sign up for the Patreon. But most importantly, please go see Talk To Me. It is in theaters right now. Go right now. Close this video. Get in your car and go up there. Take, take an Uber. It's a good film. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.